px over py, which is in this case one over two. All right, and that's the slope of the budget line. All right, so I've um, got condition one, and then the second condition is what? Budget line. So x plus 2y equals 100. So this is just y equals one half x. And I can set that in right here. So I have x plus two times one half x equals 100. So it's like two x equals 100, is that right? Or x is, what's that, 50? Y is half that. Uh, I have got a question. Where does the y, where does the one half come from again? The y this, this one? The first one. Oh, the this one. one. Yeah, where's the one over two? So this is anytime I have the, the Cobb Douglas utility function here. When you solve the problem, what you're trying to do is make sure that that indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. So this uh, condition one sort of gets me that point. What I'm trying to rule out is a point, say something like this. So if you look at those two points, what's the difference between the two points? They're both on the budget line, so they both satisfy what? Equation two. The difference between those two points is the fir this, this first one I drew, you can see that the slope of the indifference curve, the MRS, which is right here, um, is exactly equal to the slope of the budget line. Whereas in that second point I just put up, you can see clearly the slopes aren't equal, which means that if you move down there, you can move on to a higher utility or indifference curve. All right, so equation one is just writing out that the slope of the indifference curve needs to match the slope of the budget line, which is just ruling out points like that. All right. All right, so that's my uh, my first basket. This was what? 25, right? So the idea is if I'm living in those prices with that income, I get a certain utility. I think I'm gonna need that uh, later, right? So the utility here would just be X times Y. Right, so that's my utility function. If I put that in, I have X is 50, Y is 25. And this would be the utility of this indifference curve. Right? So 50 times 25 is 1250. Okay, so that's how I'm living before the price goes up, 1250. So the price goes to, I think, uh, four. So at PX equaling four, what happens is that budget line changes, right? So X becomes more expensive. Price of Y does what? Stays constant. So the vertical intercept on the budget line is going to stay the same. So that thing just kind of pivots because you can afford less X. So I get a new budget line kind of like this, right? So because the price of X went up, you're going to be able to buy less items. So what happens is you wind up at some new um, indifference curve like this, right? So you could say, like, for example, after the uh, price increase, you're uh, on a new different budget line, something to the left, and you can resolve that problem, right? So PX equaling four, for example, to find that new basket after the price went up, use the same condition one. So y over x is, um, sorry, that changes. y over x should equal the new price ratio. So the new price ratio would be the new slope of the budget line, which now would be px is, let's right. px over py. So PX over PY is now uh, four over two, right? And the budget line is four X plus two Y equals 100. Okay, so slightly different, but the same sort of two conditions. I should be able to work out my 
my x and my y. So it looks like y equals 2x. So 4x plus 2y, y is going to be 2x equals 100. We'll just do a method of substitution on these two. So it looks like 8x equals 100. So that's like two, uh, what is that, 100 divided by eight? 12.5. And then y is two times that. So y should be two times x. So that's like 25. Okay, so you call that like X, X2, Y2. All right, so price went up for X. Here's my new basket. X2 is 12.5, Y2 is 25. So that's where in my picture, right here. Clearly the consumer's worse off, right? So you're on a lower indifference curve, everything's terrible. So what I'm going to do here, the last step is, what if we give the consumer here enough income, holding my prices constant here, to push them back right up on that original indifference curve, to bring them back to the original happiness level, to compensate them for the price increase. Uh, so let's give examples like you have a, a corporation, employees are working abroad somewhere and they say the cost of housing went way up and the compensation is inadequate to pay for the housing. So there's an increase in the price of housing. What I could do is use this as a way to maybe sort of figure out how do I compensate the employee, say, for the, the increase in the price of that product service. So what I want here is I want to take that red budget line. Uh, sprinkle a little income right into the consumer's pockets. So it pushes that new budget line out parallel and hits that original indifference curve. So it's going to look something like this. Terrible picture. Okay, like so we push it out to the right. And now it's tangent to that original indifference curve where you had a utility of, uh, what was it? 1250. And where it touches that indifference curve parallel is that red dot, the second red dot. I just need to find that point. So it'll put me right back. So you're looking at that point. Um, so this is my uh, after the extra income. But it looks like I'm going to have the marginal rate of substitution, so the slope of the indifference curve has got to be parallel to this new budget line. The new budget line is just reflecting the new prices, so Px over Py. So I'm just going to use these guys, 4 over 2. Thing is, normally for equation two, I would write down a what? A um, budget line, right? That's what we've been doing. Thing is, I don't have that. If I had the budget line, I'd have the, the income, but that's what I don't know, right? So I don't know what the equation is for that new budget line. That's what I'm trying to get. But what I do know is that if we push it out just so it touches that original indifference curve, that this basket here will give them the same utility as the original utility, right? So I know that the utility of this basket, which would be x times y, should give them exactly the number that they, what, started at, right, where the story began, so 1250. That should be enough right there, two equations, two unknowns. So this just says y equals 2x. So you can plug that in here. 
So you get x, y is 2x. A lot of work for a multiple choice question, huh? One point. All right, so uh, 2x squared equals 1250. Divide that by 2, and I have x squared equals, uh, let's see if I can do that. Six. This is tough. The square root of six twenty-five. You guys memorize that in elementary school. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. And then y equals. So you just you go back in the math. Looks like two times that, right? Fifteen. We still don't have our point yet, though. This is just the basket. What I'm trying to find is, uh, I'm trying to find the income, right? So I, I need to know how much income do they need to be on that new budget. But if I know this is affordable and I have my prices, then I should be able to calculate what it costs to buy that basket, right? This formula. My budget line, PX is what? Four. Four. X is 25, 25. PY is two. two. Y is 50. And this is a big, I don't know. So I put that in the calculator 100 plus 100, $200. So if they had $200 and the price of X was what? Four bucks and the price of Y is two bucks. So X is expensive, but you had 200 bucks. The full circle, right back where I started, just as happening. And so price goes up, I complain to the boss. The boss gives me a, gives me a raise. Was it 100? I forgot where we started. Yeah, that's right. We started at 100, so you're going to need a $100 raise. 100% raise. Just ask the boss for a 100% raise, and then I'm right back where I started. Good luck, then. Um, sort of related. So X and Y are substitutes, correct? X and Y in this case, uh, this is called this is called Douglas utility function. Okay. Well, there is substitution between X and Y, though, right? Okay. Yeah. But uh, I guess my question is, like, at what point, like, this is supposed to show like income effect or some sort of effect at play, for example, because like I would imagine if you get if one price goes up, then you could buy more of the other good. Right, there's some substitution between X and Y. Right, so would that not show in the graph? So, like, there's sort of different ways to do this, right? Like, for example, the um, price of X could go from one to four. Um, you can call up corporate headquarters and say the price of housing went way up. Um, you know, I need compensation. One argument could be, uh, you could say, the boss might say, well, how much X were you buying? And you would say, what, 50 units? The price went up, you know, to $4 instead of one, so I could calculate how much money you need to get. Um, but what you find usually is that um, this is sort of a better way to do it because that, Second way we just talked about, which is a little bit logical, right? I was buying 50 units of X, price of X went one to four. This is how much money I want to get back to the original X. Right? But the problem with that is we're ignoring the fact that what you said at the very beginning about the substitution, that is in life, right? In the marketplaces, when X goes up in price, you're, you're naturally going to probably buy less of it and a little bit more Y. So you substitute away from X and go heavier on the Y, which can be good, right? And that sort of mitigates the impact of the price increase. 
So this is kind of a way to allow that by um, just focusing on the, the income I need to kind of push that back up. You're thinking about it. Good, so I know that was kind of an involved question. But you get to sort of a popular application of these consumer problems. Sounds good. Any, uh, what about any other homework questions? Question five. Which one? Five. 